Chennai chapter joined hands with us for the two days on this occasion. The theme and aim of the World Food Safety Day is safe food for a healthy tomorrow. What are we producing and consuming a safe food has immediate and long-term benefits for people throughout the globe. In recognizing the systemic connections between the health of people, animals, plants, the environment, and the economy will help us to meet the needs of the future. Also, food safety is everyone's business. A smart woman with a great vision and mission for the world. We would like to extend a special welcome to our chief guest of honor, Dr. E. Sahira Banu, Assistant Professor, Department of Home Science, Kandikram Rural Institute, Kandikram Dindigal, District Government of India. I happily welcome our Dean and Convener, Dr. Usha Antony, College of Fish Nutrition and Food Technology, who has been encouraging us with a great support to organizing here today's event. I welcome all the young minds of teaching and non-teaching and students of various institutions, colleges to participate to this event. Once again, a heart welcome one and all present here for this great uh, webinar session. I request Dr. Vishan Anthony, Dean and Convener, CFNFT to address the gathering. Dr. Brahma, will we have the uh, Tamitai Vaitre or we will proceed? Yeah, ma'am, we will proceed. Okay. Yes, yes. So, good afternoon, good evening to all present here at this webinar, which we have uh, organized jointly with uh, the Nutrition Society of India, Chennai chapter. On behalf of the College of Fish Nutrition and Food Technology, Tamil Nadu, Dr. J. J. Lalita Fisheries University, it's an honor for me uh, to organize this program with the help of the Nutrition Society of India as well as uh, the faculty and staff of the college. World Food Safety Day is something which all, all uh, stakeholders, all human beings should be concerned about. And particularly uh, all of us who are uh, engaged in um, teaching, practicing the process of, uh, um, I mean, either food technology or food processing or nutrition. Because it has such a strong impact on our health. One of the key determinants of health is the food. And when we are consuming the food, it is not just the chemical components, but also the uh, biological components as well as the microbial components which we are consuming. And therefore, uh, the significance of uh, safe food, uh, which has a short-term impact, as was mentioned just now, but also has long-term impact. So nutrition, in, along with safety of the food, both in uh, chemical terms as well as uh, microbial terms, is very, very fundamental to our health, in the absence of which we, will, we may suffer from all kinds of problems. And today, we are, it is our honor to have with us uh, a special guest speaker, Dr. Tahira Banu, whom uh, I've known for quite some time. And I'm so happy that she's here today to speak on future foods, uh, seaweeds. She has been specializing in this area and she has been uh, uh, guiding research, uh, I think almost uh, since uh, 10 years, uh, she has been working on various types of edible seaweeds. And I'm very happy that uh, she uh, agreed to give this uh, special talk uh, to our students and to all of us uh, who are uh, um, here today participating in this program. I'm sure everybody will benefit from that. I also would like to record our thanks to Dr. Sharifa Talha, convener of the Nutrition Society of India, who has, uh, who has joined hands with us and supported us in both yesterday's program and today's program. So welcome you all once again to this program. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Now I introduce our chief guest, uh, Dr. A. Sagira Bono, assistant professor, Department of Home Science, the Gandhigram Rural Institute, deemed to be university, Dindigal Government of India. He has a long journey in the graduation and the completed his PhD from the Avinash Lingam Deemed University for Women, Pharmaceutical Tamil Nadu. And his thesis title is Nutrition, Composition, Antioxidant Activity, and Therapeutic Value of CVs. 
she has 27 years experience in teaching and 10 years in research she has published 25 uh, national and international journals 20 more than 20 book chapters two books she has given many guest lectures to the various institutions she has handled five research funded research funded projects sponsored by uh, ugc and and tncst as a pa also co pa she has filed on patent also she has a life member in various scientific and professional bodies also organized various institutional activities and programs she accepted our special invitation to deliver a speech on future food food speeches you are here to eagerly hear from you now i welcome you now thank you ma'am uh, the nice introduction and all that so at the outset let us thank the almighty for his providence and all of us for this blessed day and i take this opportunity also to thank the dean dr shikusha anthony and dr sharifa ma'am uh, from nutrition society of india uh, the Uh, actually dr usha ma'am is a convener of this uh, guest uh, special lecture i thank you ma'am for giving me this platform to present my uh, research or my views and my experiences on sea beets uh, whether it's going to be the potential future food or not and i also thank uh, dr brimma purishwaran assistant professor who's organizing this uh, uh, lecture thank you sir Uh, so let's uh, start with the lecture, and I will share my slides first. So the future foods. So when we just search into nets, a lot. Uh, when we just go into Google or just navigate, we get a lot of future foods. So all of you, if you have really searched into it. Many a time you would have find this word sea beets. Okay, so we are conducting this uh, one day web this webinar in for the eve of uh, safe uh, World Food Safety Day, which was uh, celebrated yesterday with the theme of hope all of you know because there was so much on the social media. But just to recap, safe food today for a healthy tomorrow. So safe food, we mean safe food from the time of. how uh, see uh, like sowing a seed to rearing a cattle to the plate right when we get a food how how much it is being cooked or how it is harvested how it is stored how it is transported everything talks about safe food so now why we have to talk about the future foods i am audible ma'am Yes, yes, Doctor Tahira. Clearly, we can hear you, and okay. we can see the slides also. Thank you. Okay. So let's. Uh, why we have to talk about future foods? Before that, let's see into the timeline of how our food behavior, food, or uh, uh, how the market has been keeping on changing for years. So when we start from 1940s, that was a time where mechanization and it, it uh, there was a real speed into the scientific agriculture. and that was a time the mcdonalds and fast food restaurants were started they were initiated in 1940s then in 1960 the green revolution so when green revolution started to come there was high yielding cereals and there were so such a lot of varieties that we could get and there was introduction of fertilizers pesticides and all that which boost the production of all the food products agricultural produce and that was a time where fat packaged food boom began also and in 1990s in a time of 30 years there were instant food and frozen food started to revolutionize the home cookery and that was a time the health and disease prevention appears on the track so earlier it was not so we yet we are talking about mediterranean diet and all that diet those days nobody was sick and all that but once all this started slowly it started to uh, be on track the health and disease prevention and then that was a time where there was inception of computer technology too 
Then late 1990s, 95, 96, nutrition labeling became an, uh, mandatory and all that. Because of the green revolution, there was more production and people wanted to do value addition. Technology started to improve and then came the luxury supermarkets, etc. At that time, who started to recognize that as World Health Organization, obesity as a global epidemic. And then when you see in 2000s, the market was loaded with processed foods and this in turn increased the morbidity rate. And now, even 2021, consumers are becoming very greedy. They are not contented with what is available. They are unraveling it, uh, reveling new food ingredients. Who knows? This would have also been a reason for the pandemic outbreak if it is not a bio war, if it is the wet market that was a reason for it but the wet market concept was something poverty and then they went into this wild uh, animal eating but now it is not so people want new things new trends new foods so there's uh, i have just put your app to folk thinking right so nobody wants food everybody are now in food delivery systems all digital experiences they need uh, some 3d uh, designing on the food and all that. One group is uh, roaming for this. The other group is running back for nutraceuticals, functional foods, and they are again to the back to organic foods, uh, search for ethnic foods and all that. And they've gone to that extreme that when you talk about future food, you call it as body food, the ultimate organic. They started, now there are products with human milk, that's ice creams, yogurts, with human milk, which they call it as ultimate organic food. So this is the time travel that we have been with the market, uh, the food and its behavior, how we keep on changing as globalization and urbanization, civilization, all these are going up. So what will be the future foods? So when just searching into the web, I got these, okay? So one is an insect cookbook and one, this one you can see, this is a uh, cultured meat in the lab, which is called as vegetarian meat. They take the beef cells or chicken cells and they culture it and they call it as a vegetarian meat. And the rest, all we're talking more about the algae. Okay, so yes, algae will play a big role in our future food. So when you see this, it is an, uh, you would have seen this, it had come in WhatsApp for many, uh, many a time it was being forwarded. It's just in water bag, which is edible. You can just uh, drink the water along with that bag. And when it comes here, it is washable ice creams. They've got the algae, which is uh, rounded off, and then you can wash the ice cream and then we can consume it. And this is the algae, just taking a small uh, bit, or maybe a small quantity of algae, it's going to suffice your nutrient needs. And these juices, algae extracts and algae packs with the films that are being developed. And of course, the other thing, hydrophonic, land agriculture, and then now we are talking about hydrophonic. So when I, I feel, I strongly feel that algae will play a big role in the future foods. So why sea-based foods? So when we just saw, there was a recent uh, article in Nature on August 2020, the future of food from sea. He said this article uh, talks about there is a population growth, rising income and preference shifts will considerably increase the global demand for nutritious foods in the coming decades. And one side when you see the malnutrition and hunger is still plagued in many countries and the population is going to increase. It's been projected that it's going to go in 2050. It is going to be very high and the requirement of meat per year for human consumption is going to be somewhere around 500 megatons. Okay, so scaling up to that production, it's not possible because land-derived plant crops is challenging. There is uh, declining yield rates and competition for scarce land and water resources. So when they when they were just doing this, when you read the whole paper, it's very interesting. They saw or they found that sea foods are going to be the ones which is going to rule the next few uh, decades maybe after 2030 or 50, who knows, we may all be eating only seafoods because the land area is going to get shrink. There's going to be more of a sea area and all that. After that, it's again a question mark. And there again, one more uh, study I just went through, farming the sea, the only way to meet humanity's future food needs. 
because it was an interesting paper it was in 2019 he says that the only uh, way to feed the people in future is going to be farming in the sea so they have uh, found a salt resistant paddy and all that these days the agriculture university is coming up with a lot of seeds and all that so the high quality components of seafoods in that when we talk about sea beets they have been contributing to provide alternate healthy foods for human being and they are going to be an excellent uh, that's nothing but the macro algae which we are going to talk about and it has got an excellent um, uh, natural products being found in variety uh, because there's a lot of seaweeds in our uh, ocean so we can use that or tap it for medicine cosmetics food and all that so why we should talk about seaweeds why are they going to say that the farming in the ocean is going to be best and all that because we are undergoing a lot of climate change and half the photosynthesis in the world takes place in the ocean and the estimation of carbon uptake from seaweed culture activities a study done in indonesia indicates that it can uh, consume our uptake of uh, carbon from the seaweed the summer on 2.964 carbon tons per day and then they will queries like okay what is going to happen to this carbon after this seaweeds are going to get absorbed no they are going to just uh, leave it in the ocean and it's going to get sedimented it's not going to affect the quality of water or the quality of the seafood that is available in the sea and seafood seaweed is also an alternate and they say it is going to be a main source of food security okay so till now we saw the future foods and what is uh, why we are going to talk about sea based foods and in that why seaweeds so since there are a lot of students here i thought we can just first understand what is seaweeds and then we can go to the next so what are seaweeds so all of you may be very clear about the freshwater algae spirulina which is an microalgae and it is not seaweed seaweeds are different from the freshwater algae spirulina so most of them get confused with this uh, seaweeds and spirulina that is a freshwater algae it is a microalgae this is a macroalgae only found in marine environment it is a non vascular multicellular and photosynthetic plant and it is found in polar tropical and temperate waters around the globe and when you see the classification of seaweeds it has got uh, three different types this is according to the pigment that is present in it it's been classified as green chlorophyceae red rhodophyceae brown pfyceae so this is the reason that earlier we were talking about blue revolution right now they say because of the colorful uh, plants in the sea it can be termed as turquoise economy turquoise revolution that is the blue shape the ocean shape right and why seaweeds for food why should we talk about seaweeds for food so seaweeds contain 50 times more minerals than land grown plants and no fewer than 92 minerals and they are also rich source of natural bioactive compounds and they also have numerous uh, therapeutic value like anti inflammatory anti neoplastic anti microbial hypocholesterolemic and all that in asian countries they were been using for medicine for a long period of time and even now in china in you know, philippines japan they say that seaweed is a part of their diet the mineral content of seaweed is better than meat whole milk or egg and usually better than any land plants so for a decade they are doing a lot of uh, research into it and they have found that the calcium in seaweed is greater than milk and it is also easier to assimilate and bioavailability is also high so thus seaweeds can act as a best ingredient in our formulation of diet supplements also in our diet okay let's so oh, this is about the seaweed so to understand what is seaweed i've told you so what is the application of seaweeds in different fields so you have food industries in pharmaceutical industries textiles cosmetics everywhere they have their use but when it comes to india and in many other countries mainly we are producing only the phycocolloid from the seaweeds such as agar alginate and carrageenan and it is being used so when you talk about phycocolloids they are also used in for food production industries product manufacturing pharmaceutical industrial and cosmetic industries so when you talk about these hydrocolloids the first one the alginates 
they play a because they're all algal polysaccharides they play an important role as dietary fiber in human and animal foods animal health and decrease the concentration of cholesterol they prevent the absorption of toxic chemical substances they are used as stabilizers and emulsifiers so in ice cream shampoos dairy products and cosmetics and textile printing industries alginates are being used the next is an hydrocolloid called uh, agar it is extracted from many species mostly the red algae and the brown algae uh, we can extract these alginate and agar and the carrageenan and when it comes to the food grade agar we have it has been used all of us would have tasted the famous madurai jigar danda so they use this agar and that of faluda or it is commercially called as china grass and jelly all of you would have tasted jelly so the jelly can be from pectin from the fruit source or it can be from this agar and in bacteriological agar is for media preparations in microbiological studies and agarose and agropectins are used in thickeners and stabilizers when it comes to carrageenan it is obtained from red algae and the most common one is from a species called as capa ficus and other and irish moss it is used as a emulsifier it is used in dairy products and puddings and also it has many other uses in medical field and all that and when it comes we have the refined form of carrageenan and semi refined form of carrageenan and it is used in different food products as meat products ice cream milk products pet foods syrup and all this they are using these and these are the studies done at indonesia they are using it in anti aging cream and a pharmaceutical expient and health and food drink they have developed lot of soup products and all that and now to re, uh, for the past uh, decades they are working on edible coating to enhance shelf life and you can see these are the products that are there in the market mostly in the philippines market they are developing all this these are some um, glasses edible glasses edible sachets edible spices and nut uh, covers um, again the chickies and all that has been uh, uh, factored in it even the coffee pouches instant coffee instant tea and then herbs um, uh, all your chocolates and all that once when we were talking about this uh, actually dr usha anthony ma'am gave me an idea why don't you we uh, you also develop some biofilms using this uh, seaweeds but now in the market it is there are so many uh, ones available from seaweeds but not from our own country very few has come i will show you down and she was telling me we eat our indian desserts our hands are becoming very clumsy and all that so if we have these type of type of biofilms it will be good ma'am i am telling you that we are also developing some films now So hope that is also to the market, uh, right? And uh, direct consumption. Uh, so in you go, it's called a sushi. When you go to the um, products like uh, in the online markets, when you see there's a lot of products with seaweed, like biscuits are there, roasted uh, sheets are there, but nothing is from our Indian products. It's all from Chinese, Korea, Philippines, and other. Uh, country products are available, and when we talk about the nutraceutical components in seaweeds, there are number of uh, nutraceutical components, and there are so many uh, people around the globe working on it. And uh, when you talk about the polysaccharides, the carrageenan, agar agar, cucumbers, uh, alban, these are the um, uh, algae. That is the seaweeds that are uh, going to give you these uh, polysaccharides, and they are going to work. Uh, they have found that it is good for it is an anti anti diabetic agent, anti HIV, anti coagulant, and all that. And when you see the fatty acids, a very small amount of uh, fat is present in the seaweeds. It may be 0.5 uh, gram only is present, but whatever is present is all uh, of good fat. Right, so it is. Uh, it is a very rare uh, one, which is seen in a phyto. Uh, it's a plankton. It's a plant where we can see all. Uh, there's also good fat in it. So it is a very good uh, source for visual and neuro development, cardiovascular problems, arthritis, and hypertension. And talking about the phytonutrients, there's a phenolic compounds and other pigments like chlorotannins, and uh, it is from uh, the red seaweeds and green seaweeds and carotenoids. And vitamins and minerals, 
and lectins, which is all antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, and all that. So, if you're going to develop anything with these uh, seaweed, it's going to be of great use to human uh, race. And uh, now, the recent research uh, they are doing it is on Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's and epilepsy. They are taking the compounds cyanoid, cyanic acid, and doping acids from this particular species, Digenia simplex, and they are working on Alzheimer's, how the symptoms are reducing and all that. So it is, they, are showing, they are telling that there is a lot of promising results coming out of these uh, studies. So now we just saw what is seaweed, uh, what is the uh, main, uh, that is what is the product that we get, it's, I mean the hydrocolloids that we get and how is it used in neuroceuticals, how is it used in food industries and all that. So now we are sure all of us are eating seaweeds knowingly or unknowingly in form of any chickies, any jellies or any puddings that we are taking, um, jigadandas, faluda, all that we are, keep, we are eating seaweeds, but not as fresh or as sheets, not it. But now there are many households going into this product and they're getting it online and they're trying to use these uh, sheets and so seaweed consumption is not popular in india but it is it is a popular dish in chinese and Philipp or filipinos and all that so if it becomes a future food there it is not going to be a problem they are going to enjoy it they know how safe the food is how uh, how to harvest it how to eat it but when it comes to our uh, Indian cuisine or Indian uh, mentality, it is quite, uh, we don't know, it is a question mark. But anyway, I assure you it's going to be a future food. I'll, I'll tell you why it's going to be a future food for Indians and what is the significance in Indian scenario. So using these uh, seaweeds is going to really help us to uh, bring down or cut down the rising prevalence of lifestyle and nutritional disorders. So see it, will it be potential future food for India? So let's see. So when you talk about our coastline, we have a very long coastline of 8,100 kilometers. This is given as 1,500, they have excluded few things. And there are 30% of the human population in this coastal line, coastal population. And uh, India is the seventh largest marine fishing nation in the world. The Bay of Bengal and Arabian Sea are rich fishing grounds. And when you see about the seaweed species, uh, India is the uh, largest country which has got a high number of uh, species of seaweed, around 844 species are in India, from starting from the Gulf of uh, Kutch to uh, our Gulf of Mannar, it is both sides, we have the Arabian Sea, the other side we have the Bay of Bengal, and these are the seaweed species that we have in each uh, place. And the resource in India is very high. And that too, when it comes to Tamil Nadu, we have a coastline of 1,076 kilometers covering 15 districts. Okay, and the total species in Gulf of Manna, that is edible species, they are talking is about 282, where there are brown seaweeds 146, green seaweeds 80, and red seaweeds 56. So this is one potential that we have in India, the Gujarat is the major place where we can get a lot of seaweeds. The next is our Tamil Nadu, the Gulf of Manar. And now, okay, so we've just talked about seaweeds, we saw its benefits, we saw everything and what is the potential in India. But again, the safety is very important. We cannot go and collect seaweed anywhere and everywhere and just consume it. We have to see, uh, we have to be very clear where to collect it, how to collect it and how to process it and how to use it. So for now, they say that the Bioreserve Marine Park area from Palm Bay, that is Rameshwaram to Mandavam region, you get a very uh, safe uh, area for collection of seaweeds. It is devoid of toxic toxins like heavy metals and all that. And it is an area where there is abundant wild seaweeds growing and it is a pollution-free zone. So when you come to the safety part of it, you should be very clear where to collect the seaweeds and how to process it. And we cannot just eat it as such because there are challenges in consuming the seaweed as a food also. So we should be very clear how, where and how to collect the seaweeds. 
So when you see the clear global uh, market value of the seaweeds in 2019, FA was given as as to USD 12 billion dollars. And whereas India's uh, seaweed production was uh, in 2020, it is 25,000 tons, but they are estimated to increase it more by giving a lot of uh, other avenues to the fisher group. And these are the countries where they have a wild capture as well as uh, seaweed aquaculture. Here is where the farming, uh, where we'll talk about the farming of seaweeds and all that. So India's seaweed production is 5,000 tons of cultured seaweed and 25,000 tons of wild seaweed. So when you see our, our uh, availability of seaweeds in our Indian coast is very high. As wild, we have a lot abundant availability of seaweed. But when it comes to cultured seaweed, it is very, very less. And this is the estimated market value they are talking about. And when it comes, these are the different seaweeds that are produced uh, throughout the world for food. And, and now uh, when you go to this Rameshwaram area, you can see these women seaweed divers who go and pluck these seaweeds from uh, the sea and they sell the seaweeds. seaweeds. But later on, they, we, they found that if you are going to allow this activity to continue, they are going to exploit the sea because they are not clear how to harvest the seaweeds from the coral leaves. Uh, for a coral leaf reef to form, it takes nearly 1,000 years. So they do it, they collect it wild, and the way of collecting is also wild. They damage the coral reefs and all that. So they are not very clear about the awareness. It was just an income generation because it was an abandoned. They used to go collect the seaweed and bring it to the shore. So came the method of seaweed cultivation, farming in India too. It is now when you go to the Gulf of Manor or Gujarat uh, uh, Gulf of Kutch, you can see that there's a lot of rats floating on the sea, which gives you a beautiful colors and all that, which is nothing but the seaweed farming has been started. So this was again started by CMFRA and CSMCRA, the Central Salt and Marine Research Institute, which brought in the technology of cultivating the seaweeds. So, on, uh, so they found that these were the cultivable seaweeds like uh, Kepaphycus. This Kepaphycus alvarezi is a red seaweed, which is not a uh, species of uh, Indian origin. They are the species of uh, um, align. They are brought it from Philippines and they have kept it. But now this particular seaweed, since because of its uh, gel strength and its phycopolloid uh, thing, they are mostly it's a profitable seaweed. That is, that this is the only seaweed that now they are farming in these uh, area of Gulf of Manila. And they brought in Gracelia edulis. It is also another red seaweed which is of uh, greater use in. Camatinian and uh, agar industries and Terpenaria is a brown seaweed and Sarplasm, uh, they are doing a lot of studies on uh, obesity, anti-obesity activity of this particular seaweed and this is Gelitila acidosa as it uh, the look, the, uh, the sight of it tells us it is a, uh, it's got a high amount of uh, uh, gel in it that is a hydrocolloid so it is mainly uh, used for uh, producing hydrocolloids and Gracelaria dura so these are the cultivable species in India where they have started to cultivate and again all these uh, seaweeds are only going to your uh, hydrocolloid industries and uh, for other purposes it is maybe for food or for medical purposes. So coming to the cultivation of the Pafaikas, this is in Tamil Nadu, in Rameshwaram coast and uh, other places. There are many methods of cultivation. So now the fishermen uh, have been uh, motivated and they have given awareness and all that. And they have uh, started to cultivate. You can just see it looks like a paddy field. So you just see this like an open culture. So in future, there may be a lot of uh, avenues. And the one thing is, uh, I was just talking about the cultivable seaweeds. This all depending on the market value they are cultivating. But nobody has started cultivating seaweeds for direct use of food, like the green algae and all that is not being uh, cultivated. So they are only one particular species is cultivated. And the other uh, best part is these green seaweeds can grow as an epiphyte on top of these seaweeds and we can be collecting it for food. 
good but when it comes to large scale production i think uh, there are they have to find out some methods of cultivating green seeds too so this is a uh, raft method it is with bamboo um, uh, they'll have a bamboo which is being tied on four sides and they'll have a net because a net is used for uh, because otherwise the uh, grazing the fishes will come and graze it and go so in order to prevent grazing they are using a net below and then they'll have knots rope knots will be put and then uh, they will put it in the sea and it will take some 45 days maximum harvest you can do it in 30 to 45 days depending upon the type of sea so there are many methods that they are employing and uh, many innovative methods Uh, but now they are not using this cold bean bag uh, method and all that because it's again and uh, it is not eco friendly they're going it only for the rope and uh, bamboo stick method and of course the when you see the cost of it it is quite high because uh, the bamboo and all that but it is a one time investment you can take around 10 to 20 harvest using a single raft and uh, you have even the dead corals they go and collect the dead coral stones and they are using that also for the cultivation of seaweed and then that is also an eco friendly method of cultivating so they have cement block method raft method bottle net method and all that. and this is an uh, visual overview of seaweed farming operations that are carried out in uh, rameshwaram coastal area and they say uh, as i told you at the beginning it is a livelihood creation it reverses ocean acidification it the seaweed is pesticide and fertilizer free so it is 100% organic natural carbon sink protects the coral reef so it is not only a benefit for uh, said seaweed but it's also a benefit for seafood so um, all the fishes crabs shrimps and all that also uh, about uh, their um, yeah they start to grow only on uh, these seaweeds so they feed the seaweeds and they are growing so it becomes a um, symbiotic uh, way and you're going to uh, cultivate seaweed you're going to also increase the growth of uh, the habitats the sea uh, habitats and when you see the markets and uh, the added value of seaweed products when it comes to the pharmaceutical bioactives they say it is around greater than 1000 dollars per kg so that is the reason uh, i told you these seaweeds are only being cultivated right because all these are going only for the um, colloidal colloid industries where they are used as carrageenan or arginates or uh, agar they are being using because the market value for these seaweeds are very high so nobody has yet thought about uh, how to um, cultivate these uh, for seaweeds for direct consumption okay uh, and nutraceutical and cosmetic Cosmet uh, cosmeceuticals, it is coming around five hundred to thousand dollars per kg. Again, here uh, when you see or uh, they talk about the nutraceuticals, not in our India. We are not doing much of work in India. There are few companies in Bangalore uh, and a few companies in Mumbai which is uh, taking these, uh, isolating these uh, nutraceuticals. But there are not much. Uh, for human food and fine chemicals they say it is 20 to 200 per kg agri chemicals biopolymers animal feed and all that it is just getting pretty so when you see the market value it is mainly for the pharmaceuticals agar uh, uh, all your gel your scanning gels then your um, tablet covers and all that they are uh, using these uh, hydrocolloids uh, seaweed products okay where are we in seaweed utilization for food so now we saw about what seaweeds are what is its use and uh, how are they uh, why uh, india we say it can be a future what is the potential in india because just because of our coastline and the abundance of our uh, coastline and the uh, seaweed as such naturally also we have a lot of uh, seaweeds with us and now the government of india has uh, also started with the uh, seaweed farming and all that okay now what have we done in seaweed utilization for food so when we just go into that and see there are few studies like uh, the cftri has done some studies on carrageenan use of carrageenan as a fat replacer yeah, again the hydrocolloid is being used and development in quality assessment of carrageenan incorporated low fat chowat uh, patties it's here again uh, the livestock uh, college of veterinary and animal husbandry has done some studies 
uh, but again here everybody are at working on the carrageenan part only the hydrocolloids nobody has started to use this uh, seaweed as such uh, in a direct form so that it can be uh, it can really we can get the um, uh, nutritive value from those for like how we eat and we nobody has started to eat in india and when you see the fssi regulations there are uh, regulations for carrageenan alginate and all that so it is giving they are giving a number and all that and they are giving the specifications how much it has to be what has to be the lead content cadmium content and all that the quality and all that so i told you that our uh, indian institute has also started to develop a biofilm so it is the vishakhapatnam center the central institute of uh, fisheries technology has developed an uh, edible seaweed film that can be placed plastic in food packaging so they are mainly using red seaweed again the same red seaweed the capaphytus alvarezi and green seaweed alvarezi and uh, they are, they are uh, trying to uh, put it in noodles pack that uh, instant masalas are coming through. so they want to uh, change those uh, aluminium foils to these packs so that it is edible when you make a noodles this uh, seaweed is also going to get uh, mixed with that and same way coffee instant coffees tea sachets uh, taste makers sauce packs and all this they are trying to uh, Uh, pack it with this particular biofilms, which is being developed from the seeds. And so this is a uh, news from April twenty twenty one. It's a very recent one that has come out. And uh, they are and one direct uh, use they are using is uh, like as powders in quality of fish cutlet. It's again a CFDRI research which they have done. And then uh, this Pradhan Mandri Matsya Sambada Yo Sambada Yojana. It is they have started uh, giving now 640 crores uh, being invested for the past five years for seaweed farmers. So the government is also thinking about uh, expanding the seaweed cultivation and seaweed use. Maybe we don't know in what uh, angle they are thinking about, but they have started to uh, pour in money for seaweed cultivation. and there are many uh, fishermen who are coming into this process but if there are some traditional thoughts and conflicts going on among them so i would also like to share some research outcomes of my research right so i worked on edible seaweeds grasslaria acanthophora uh, alba reticulata two green seaweeds and uh, brown seaweed and red seaweed so we just took all the seaweeds we did all the processing and then we went in for uh, as usual our nutritional studies and all that we did and uh, i had developed three products in it one is seaweed chocolate for which i got a patent for it for the rich nutritional composition of this chocolate and a seaweed tea and this was mainly for anemic children we had uh, developed this product for anemic children and this is a seaweed tea which was developed for patients with uh, pre oral cancer dyspepsia uh, so that was also we have had the result of very promising research in that and this is a low glycemic index biscuits was prepared using the seaweeds and also we had also developed a yogurt product which uh, was incorporated in seaweed again it is with the textural qualities and all that so these are the products that we have developed and uh, um we are not at commercialized because there are some uh, issues that we have to clear it but now the fssa is also going to bring in that what the committee report says and this time the budget for seaweed is also uh, they had even more more amount of budget for uh, seaweed cultivation and all that so we are hoping for something good that can happen uh, in future and this is another study which we have done and uh, it is also published we have uh, collected the seaweed coating Uh, and uh, we have seen that the, because the farmers we have uh, our area the nickel area is a farming place where motte chakram it is a place where there's lot of tomato farmers and during the peak seasons they throw the seaweed out uh, on the roads and uh, they came to us because we have a kvk attached to our they came to us and asked for an uh, Mm, some shelf life improvement of some value addition so we just thought of coating it with the seaweed and we found that its shelf life was improved for 28 days and there was no uh, change in juice concentration or total soluble solids or whatever it is it was uh, very promising so we are further working on this uh, particular uh, product also uh, and uh, 
for coming to this uh, technology information forecasting and assessment council council report uh, on seaweeds cultivation and utilization prospects in india which was very encouraging and it says as yes seaweed is going to be our future food but then we have some challenges in seaweed utilization in india people see it as a weed in spite of its goodness but nobody is ready to think seaweed as a green or purple or a spinach or something like that nobody is uh, trying to think it in terms of the green but they are at their mindset uh, as the term indicates weed and they have a fear of tasting a new fit with a slight fishy order because our palates are not used to that particular uh, taste and all that and new to our Indian design and they are not aware of the benefits and of course there are some challenges like pollution and uh, metal toxicants and again other bioactive components present in the seaweeds and there are very limited studies on the toxicity and anti-nutrients and methods to remove the same and poor motivation for the seaweed farming uh, due to climate change poor measures to disease control and there's a lot of grazing also as we have it in land plants we have it in the sea also and conflicts with the traditional fishermen so these are the challenges that uh, we have in front of us and many more are there i've just uh, listed a few um, and uh, when it comes to a specific uh, specific recommendation of this report what he says is the large scale exploitation of seaweeds for almost entire industrial unit of our nation is from the southeast coast and hence this exploitation and processing sector along the gulf of Mannar and Park Bay shall be looked after by the proposed seaweed development board. So they are going to bring in a board called the seaweed development board and the future focus on seaweed utilization would be for human food. Since our culinary practices are different from others, it is important to develop recipes that suit to the Indian palatability. And it is this contest, it is important to establish that seaweeds intended for human consumption are safe, free from all kinds of toxicants, including heavy metals, pesticides, pathogenic microbes, etc. Carrying capacity of seaweed farming site is also an important measure to study the sustainability of seaweed farming. This will help to optimize the yield and avoid crashing of crops. So this is one recommendation they've given and with specific to food, they have given this particular recommendation so we can uh, very soon expect some foods in the market with seaweeds. Status of import of edible seaweeds for the Indian market by star hotels and other companies need to be studied. Such data can be obtained from customs import department and private data agencies. Now that it is recommended to have an international collaboration for processing and preparation of seaweed based foods with those countries where seaweed consumption as human food is high for edible seaweeds. An FSSI standard should be created till then coded standards can be followed which are in place and created. Production of nutraceutical supplements and pharmaceutical products so human health care is important. Nutrient, nutrient profiling and nutritional labeling of Indian seaweeds and their products, development of standard protocols for seaweed safety, socioeconomic importance and consumer acceptance of seaweed as food commodity. So these are the specific recommendations given by this committee and very soon there's going to be a board on seaweed development board where they are going to harness and use and going to find out ways of how uh, seaweeds are going to be used as food in Indian by the Indians and also um, there is a lot of research avenues opening because of this then we have to work we can do a lot of traditional profiling labeling and um, nutraceutical supplements and all that can be developed by our um, students and we can see how much has to be consumed and how it can be processed and all that so coming to the conclusion, algae and algae technology can be the process to sustain food production of food and the, for the future food production will be environmentally friendly. And uh, I also say that uh, algae, it is very safe. But the main problem here is we should see, we should always know where to collect it. So once all these regulations are in line, it is streamlined and channelized, sure we can work on uh, we can uh, eat algae which is going to be a very uh, highly nutritious uh, food ingredient in our daily diet. thank you
Thank you. Uh, dear participant, if you have any questions, clarifications, doubts, you can write. Otherwise, you can also type in the chat box. Ma'am, can you explain about the shelf life of seaweeds? Yes, uh, when it comes to shelf life, when it is raw, uh, when it is fresh, uh, we can just keep it for one or two days, that's all. But when it is dry, we can keep it for years together. Uh, you won't believe I had collected a seaweed in 2010, um, uh, right? Till date, uh, I have that seaweed uh, pack, and there's no any uh, fungal growth or color change or anything like that because it is full of uh, I know, nutrients, like uh, it has certain to compounds which can keep it safe but the problem here is you should process it dry it properly and keep it in a safe container i'm not even refrigerated and there are a lot of studies that um, there are a lot of studies saying that uh, it is acting as a preservative they've used in foreign countries in uh, asian countries like um, china philippines and all that they are using it as a preservative for uh, some sort of pickles and all that so they say it is having a high shelf life and it helps in preservation enhancing the uh, shelf life thank you ma'am thank you so much and have you checked the nutrient profile of the cook products yes we have checked and uh, even the bioavailability studies we have done uh, when you take alva lactuca, which is a green algae, when you see the iron content, protein and all that is very high compared to the land plants and uh, nutritional quality also is not much lost. Tahira, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Uh, in the countries where it is being consumed as food, you mentioned Japan and Philippines, what is the average quantity per uh, you know meal or uh, per serving which they are adding or consuming? Ten uh, grams, twenty grams, like that. Can you just give yeah. us some idea about that? Yes, yes. Uh, in Japan, like we have the RDI, they have also an RD, RDA, right? Uh, which they say that seaweeds uh, around thirteen grams, one three, uh, to twenty grams per day they take dry seaweeds. And when it comes to oh. fresh seaweeds, uh, they take around uh, 50 to 100 grams uh, per day. Like our green leafy vegetables, they are consuming it. When it comes to dry seaweeds, they are uh, like, un like uh, RDA, they have given it as 13 to 20 grams per day. For in Japan, Thank you. but in other countries, yeah. I'm not sure because only that I had the data. Thank you. Thank you. That's useful information. Ma'am, excuse me, I have another doubt. Uh, mm -hmm. What are the ill effects of uh, consuming uh, seaweeds in excess? Sometimes people may be allergic to cold. <coughs> so in such cases, whether seaweeds are recommended? Yeah, when you ask about ill effects, we can start from the nutrient point of view also. Because uh, when you say, that, for example, I'm eating a dry uh, seaweed of one gram or two gram, the amount of calcium, and uh, the minerals present is going to be very high. So if you're going to have too much of that, it is going to lead to some other problem, right? So we should first uh, find out what is our uh, allowance, recommended allowance, like the Japanese and all they have, we should also find out. Second thing is uh, the toxins present in seaweeds. There are some seaweeds which has a natural uh, toxins present in it, right? like uh, neurotoxins uh, as soon you eat that uh, I even i have tried eating those seaweeds when we went for collection it will immediately uh, you will have one numbness in your uh, tongue and will uh, take at least around one hour to overcome that and eating too much of uh, certain seaweeds they are in animal studies even the seaweeds which i had worked on uh, they give some sort of depression 
or anxiety uh maybe it is the uh, hormones or the nucleic acids or something there are some pro- i told you, you know we have a lot of challenges in using the cv so we should be very clear what cv we are collecting and how much we are going to use it is it clear and cold and all that i don't know maybe if anybody has some allergy in eating fish if they have maybe they may also have the same allergy while eating fish uh, with seaweed also and the seaweeds play a role in wastewater treatment yeah bio remediation they are uh, using seaweeds any culturing difficulties such as low tide requirements on kelp farming yeah there are a lot of uh, parameters that has to be followed the salinity uh, the wave current and how far we have to put the raft uh, in the sea uh, what is the season for different seasons everything will be changing so that is all there they are finding lot of difficulties so slowly it is all been sorted out because uh, you would have heard about red bloom algal bloom and all that which may even uh, destroy the whole farming like how in land plants we have like that is there in the ocean also uh, about the pre treatment in uh, sea beans uh, yes ma'am like uh, collect while collecting the sea beans we have to wash it thoroughly with the uh, sea water itself and because there will be some small uh, fauna also present in the sea beans like uh, small uh, crabs snails and all that so we should thoroughly wash it in the uh, sea water and then bring it to our place and wash it with fresh water running fresh water and then uh, because there will be lot as i told you physical hazard biological hazards and everything will be present in it and we have to clean it uh, uh, thallus by thallus we have to clean it so that uh, it is uh, cleaned properly and accordingly if we want to use for hydrolytes it can be boiled and the gel can be taken or if it is want to be going to use it as a dry form then we have to dry it and usually shade drying is better and if we are going to collect the red seaweed and all that it has to be sent sun dried because of the presence of moisture is very high in those seaweeds so it has to be sun dried in a safe environment it can't be just thrown on anywhere and dry so all these are some of the pre treatments and the asset they are not using any uh, because it's already and as i told you it's in the preservative or uh, you are not using any citric acid or salt or any other hypochlorite uh, any solutions for washing these seaweeds but for preparing hydrocolloids uh, they are using some chemicals for bleaching and all that purpose so that's about the pre treatment they are using for seaweeds yeah it is a vegan product it is a vegan product and it's a good substitute because it provides all the nutrients that a non vegetarian food is going to give you and one thing i would tell you the only product uh, it has b12 there is other land plants i don't think so only on processing we get uh, b12 but seaweeds are good source of b12 Preparation oral cancer removing mm-hmm. jaggery. Suppose if it gets fermented, what is the alternate? Actually, uh, this was prepared fresh and then given to the tea was given to the people, and it was uh, the main aim was uh, they they were just because of the taste. Uh, they are not used to this uh, taste, so we added very little quantity of jaggery, and we asked them to uh, gobble, keep that uh, liquid for a long time in the. now as per the suggestion given by the oncologist and then they consumed it so jaggery was not a main ingredient there it was a very small amount just to mask the taste it was added what is the amino acid composition or protein quality for most of the weeds ma'am it's all uh, most of it has uh, are essential amino acid composition it is it is that what it is equal to that of a fish protein okay thank you and they say that uh, the nutrient present in the fish is mainly due to the seaweeds that it consumes its main food is only seaweed so the that is another reason why there is more of pupa and all that in seafood 
that's another state of research mm. that's going on. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. So the, all the informations are from the government uh, websites about seaweed farming and all that. So you can also uh, get it. It is available in the net. And anything to do with seaweeds, you can even uh, contact CSM CRM Mandapam. Uh, where there there are people who really help us out in collecting seaweeds, finding, uh, identifying the seaweed. That is very important. We can't just go take any seaweed. We have to identify it. So that is available. Uh, if you go to them, they will help us. There's a taxonomist who will help us to identify whether the seaweed is an edible or a non-edible seaweed. So that's one thing we can uh, do for safety measures. Any other doubts? Questions? Any other questions? Any other questions? Any other questions? I think if there are no more questions okay. from the students or other participants, then we can wind up. Yeah. Okay. Now we are coming to the control section. Would seaweed consumed as a staple food in future? Yes. Who knows? That's going to be our food. And the BDS shop, there is a uh, a prediction. Uh, I I didn't share that paper. And maybe in 2015, we'll be getting seaweeds in a PBS shop, like how we get rice and all that. Seaweeds uh, also may be present or will be supplied to us in from the PBS shops. Have any more questions? Hello, ma'am. I have a question. Hello. Is it audible, ma'am? Hello, hello, ma'am. Yes, yes, you're audible. Yes, yes you're audible. audible. Ma'am, suppose if you want to extract and uh, use it for uh, shade drying, and that means sun drying, suppose you want to. Uh, uh, one kg of uh, seaweed powder. Sir, I can't hear you properly. Hello, ma'am. Uh, tell me, sir. Ma'am, suppose I want uh, one kg of uh, seaweed dried powder product. How okay. much raw materials is required, ma'am? Same like your greens. Uh, you can take one kg, it will give you 250 to 200 grams. Because moisture content, it depends again about the seaweed also. If you're going to collect ones like red and uh, brown, it's going to be less. Collect green, it's going to be a little more. If you're around 300 grams, you will, if you get, if you take one kg, you will get for green seaweeds. And red seaweeds, it will be even more less. Thank you. We have to do a lot of research studies we can do on this. So yeah. it's an avenue for all of you. So you can work on it. Sure, ma'am. Shall we conclude this question? Yeah. I think Thank there you. are no more questions, so I think we can conclude. Yeah. So, ma'am, it's a really a wonderful session. Actually, being your food technology student, you are uh, explained very clearly and uh, you have focused on your research uh, very clearly. I think I hope all the students have uh, got cleared. Uh, you have gone through the basic benefits, market value, classification, cultivation, uh, in future uh, value added products, etc. I think we and our everyone students are clear for the upcoming. Uh, 
projects <laughs> very soon. Uh, thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, also, on behalf of CFNFT, I would like to thank uh, to the Sakira uh, Bond, ma'am, for enlightening our, uh, your knowledge with us. Uh, once again, I thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. And I thank also Usha, ma'am, and Sharifa, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, thank you very much, Dr. Tahira, for being with us this afternoon and sharing your expertise. You've given us such an excellent overview of the whole thing and focused on those aspects which are really necessary and useful for students and for researchers. So thank you very, very much. Thank you, ma'am. It's a pleasure always to hear, listen to you to talk. Thank you. Thank you, Tahira. It was an excellent talk. Really, we learned a lot. Thank also, you, ma'am. my duty and responsibility, I would like to thank uh, our Vice Chancellor, Dr. G. Sukumar, for giving permission to conduct this program. Uh, also, I would like to thank our Dean, Dr. Usha Anthony, convener for her motivation to conduct this uh, World Food Safety Day program successfully. Also, a special thanks to the teaching and non-teaching staff for the continuous support and coordination. Also, our heartfelt thanks to our students from the various institutions and colleges and the education institution for the active participation. Which and thank you to Doc. Yeah, and thank you to Dr. Sharifa and Nutrition Society of India also. Yeah, also I thank Nutrition uh, Chapter, Nutrition Society of India, NA Chapter. I thank special thanks to Sharifa ma'am. With these warm words and a kind message, we move to the end of this today's session. Now we rise for national anthem. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Raji, thank, ma you. thank you for attending. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tahira, so much. Thank you, Dr. Sharifa. Thank you. Thank you, Shah. And all the other. Thank you. And Raji, ma'am. And I think Uma, ma'am, was also there. She has also left. Thank you. <laughs>